Welcome to Archetypes, and I'm Lee Woodruff, and I have the unique experience of interviewing Bob Woodruff. And yes, he is my husband. Part of the concept of Archetypes is if you know yourself, if you answer the question, who am I, then you're really able to figure out what you do and what you want to do uh, and what you should be doing. And one of the biggest stories about you, really, is your change in your life when you started out as a lawyer and became mm -hmm. a journalist. Can you describe mm -hmm. that to us a little bit? Well, I was a lawyer first, and then I, I moved into journalism. But I think any time anybody asks me what, how that happened is Lee and I got married, and we moved over to Beijing to go teach law to young Chinese students. And at the end of that year, Tiananmen Square blew up. Uh, we lived through that, and I kind of I fell in love with journalism, having, having witnessed what we witnessed and working for CBS for that couple of weeks, a few weeks. And uh, I realized that, you know, that's what I want to do. I think that in my soul and my gut, I realized that's what I've got to pursue next. And it's not been an easy thing to do, but it worked out okay. We you did. made a dramatic change, though. We were, you were 30 years old. You were working at a law job that you weren't in love with. Mm -hmm. Well, I think there's a lot of things in life where you just, uh, you don't really know when things are going to change or even if things are going to change. I think people almost feel so secure and so confident that when they start and, you know, trying the kind of career you're pursuing that it's going to go the way that you want it to go and then suddenly in a day, boom, it changes. I mean, I changed so many ways, which you know, I took you to 10 different cities we lived in since we've been married for the last 25 years. I think your story is inspirational because you said, I'm, I'm a father, we had a little baby, and you said you were not happy. It was obvious to me at a, the deepest level. So we both said, let's do it. Let's make this change. Do the thing that makes you happy, because then you'll be a happy person, a happy dad, a happy husband. And you took the chance. You took a big salary cut. We qualified for food stamps. And you got your first job in a tiny little market in Northern California. So what would your advice be to people in terms of their career? If somebody's in a job now, what, what do you say I think passion is, is, I think, the main thing. I think I want to tell people that it's, do something that you're passionate about. I mean, everybody needs to guarantee they're going to have different things. And you have to put all of good food, good vacations in perspective, remembering that the bulk of your day is on your work. It's nice to have a better meal. It's nice, probably slightly better to have a really beautiful place to go on a vacation. But don't forget, you're here, you know, where we are here at the place that we work. So make sure you f follow that passion as much as you can. Do it young, too, while you can. Try as many things as you can. Sometimes those that make the most intellectual decisions about things are those that just follow their gut, not just study everything and make sure you're careful about everything else. You know, do something that's in your, you feel like that. I don't think I ever even looked at how little I was going to make when I decided to bail out of, um, maybe, I maybe we did. Yeah, I think you did. Known, yeah. I think you I had the numbers down there. the hills. Um, but I think you just need to, to do what you really it might be stupid when you look back, no. but give it a shot. I think that we learned that lesson when you were injured, that you can plan all you want. You can right. say, you know, I want to have three kids and I want to have a house here. And life often has different plans for you. And I think when we, when we jump ahead, so, so journalism career, moving around the country, get to the network, become the anchor of World News after Peter Jennings dies. Right. A month into that journey for you, you're covering the war in Iraq, and you're hit by an IED, and you really should be dead right now. And that ensuing journey and recovery and everything that our family went through really taught us this one big lesson, which is you only have right now. Like, this is it. This is what we got. We don't have our hands on the script. We don't know how it's going to go. So there's something sort of freeing about that in kind of going forward. Now, you can't always live that every day. You do have bills to no. pay and you have other stuff. And you have, you have risks. You can't be so irresponsible to just do that today. I'll be dead tomorrow, therefore I'll right. just go and right. hang out and jump off the cliff or I'll not go to work at all, blow it all off, don't pay the bills. But I don't know, there's some, there's some line there where you, where you go over. So and maybe I went over that line? line too far. I don't know, maybe I did. So then what do you say to somebody about how they go forward and how they take that mm -hmm. spirit inside themselves? I would say mix what we said. I think mix cautious and planning together with following your gut. I think, uh, I think that's, that's the way. Everything our family went through 
uh, with your injury and your miraculous recovery, and then the journey that we took as a family to be in the military hospital after Bob was injured by a roadside bomb, and understand how so many of our families, our veteran families, don't necessarily get the care after they get back home. So we created the Bob Woodruff Foundation to assist those families. Did you ever think in your life, even though you had always covered military issues, did you ever think you would be in this position? I mean, you've taken your own injury and you've said, listen, I, I'm going to take what happened to me and try to help other people. Is that weird? Sometimes? No, the, the weird part was not, it, it's not weird to do that. I think it's incredibly satisfying and fulfilling to do something like this. I mean, this is, this, if I can, and I've said this, is, you know, if, if one life is improved or saved, it's worth all of the time you put into it. You know, you have to, to do something. I think, I think we the one. We talked about passion. The, well, the, it's passion. I yeah. guess the one that I never really predicted or made me feel somewhat uncomfortable was kind of like this, you know being interviewed by somebody else. I was always the one doing the interviewing, and when this happened, and, and you know, I was well known and injured in the war, and we were able to wake people up in the world about traumatic brain injury, which I never knew what that word was before. Um, so we were able to do that, and it was weird, though, to be in a position where people were asking me yeah. questions. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Oh, boy, yeah. Is mine a good archetype? It is to me. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't want an intellectual who is an athlete and has some visions about the future? I but, mean, I, I, obviously, I chose you. But what is learning about your archetypes? Did that enlighten you at all, to sort of see that distilled into those archetypes? I mean, I, I think, uh, I guess I probably want to be some of the things that I picked, but I, I guess the, the science of what you're doing is that if I pick something, it is a true indication of what... I am. Yeah, the questions are definitely calibrated that way. But would well, you I think they're picked... accurate. When I think about myself, yeah. they're absolutely accurate. So when you heard those three terms, you said to yourself, yeah, that's kind of me. It is. Yeah. But I want mine to be the best one that anyone's ever okay. taken. Okay, well, that would be the competitive part of you. All right. Well, I want to thank you for coming Aww. on the show and for answering the questions. And uh, it was really fun to interview your own husband. So thanks for watching. Come back again soon.